The Christmas story should make you hungry. And for more than cookies and eggnog. Adam here with Bishop Sheen Rosaries, and we're in the final days of our Advent sale. If you haven't already got a rosary, go over to SheenRosaries.com and pick up a rosary at 10% off using the code ADVENT10. I'm super humbled to see us growing here at Bishop Sheen Rosaries and our media. I'm very excited that you're going to be on mission with us, and remember, all of our rosaries are on mission to help feed the children at our sister school in Uganda, Mary Seat of Wisdom. The children at this school often don't get fed much outside of the school's food that they give them because they're in such poverty. That is a great segue into talking about poverty and hunger. We're talking about the third joyful mystery today, the nativity. Initial reactions might be like, what, Christmas? Poverty? I feel like we do it up. It's glitz and glamour. And we shouldn't forget that Jesus was a king. But something I find very interesting is that we common folk, <laughs> common folk, live more luxurious today than even the ruling class or the royalty of just a few centuries ago. I think of automobiles, the fact that you have just a dishwasher? Oh my gosh, my wife and I felt like royalty moving into the house we currently have just because we upgraded from no dishwasher to a dishwasher. Did you know the dishwasher was invented in 1886? Like, that's not even 150 years ago. Still, growing up as a kid, I felt like I was in poverty just because I was a private Catholic school kid and all my other friends had uh, trampolines and playstations and my parents didn't give us that. So I remember my parents sitting me down one evening and being like, where do you think you fall on the line? You think you're this poor over here? Well, you're actually like way over here. You're really well to do, young man. And that really changed my perspective on things. I still think about it today. And I also remember my parents taking me to the soup kitchen one year on Christmas and we fed the hungry at the shelter on Christmas night as a family. Though I probably had a terrible attitude about it that day, I still think about it, so obviously it was a very formative experience. Well, why do soup kitchens even exist? It's to feed that hunger in multiple senses of the word. Especially the Catholic or Christian shelters I've been privileged to be a part of, they really stress feeding not only the body, but the soul. Matthew 4.4, 4, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. By failing to feed the spirit and only feeding the body, we're actually missing a great evangelical opportunity. So I guess by now I should probably throw up the reading on the screen. Here is the gospel according to Luke, the nativity, there you go. In all those Hallmark movies in Will Ferrell's Elf, you hear all the time, Christmas cheer, the Christmas spirit, right? Well, it's much more than just giving presents, drinking hot cocoa, singing carols. From the very beginning, when Jesus was born, he knew he was, and I'm looking at my crucifix, destined to give of himself. Our king was never rich by earthly standards. He was always different from the kings like King Herod, Augustus Caesar. Mary and Joseph weren't rich. Nazareth was considered a backwater town. You wouldn't see the celebrities zero AD walking through Nazareth, if you know what I mean. The little town of Bethlehem did not even give them an indoor room. They got a stable, a smelly, dirty stable where the animals were. Do you know what Bethlehem means? It actually means, and I'm gonna butcher the pronunciation here, in Hebrew, Beth Lechem, or house of bread. Where did Jesus lay? in the manger or the animal's feeding trough. Can you see it all starting to come together now? From the very beginning, Jesus was food. What did he eventually come to say in John chapter six? I am the bread of life. Man, I love when our faith just wraps it all nicely with a little bow. Hunger is the best analogy for the feeling of longing we should have for Christ. And I think in these preparation seasons like Advent or Lent, we should really reflect on, are we hungry? Let's reflect on this third mystery, the nativity. Poverty is the fruit of this. Are you poor in spirit? Are you hungering 
for the coming of God? If you're doing Advent right, you should be starving for Christ by the time that Christmas rolls around. Singing with the angels, glory to God in the highest. The bread of life has come down from heaven. You should be journeying with the shepherds and the magi and just anticipating what this great sight might be. You want to make sure that your spiritual stomach, if you will, I know our souls don't have a body, but your spiritual stomach shouldn't be full of things from this world. This is the fundamental purpose of fasting. We make that space in our soul for God, for the things that are not of this world. The king of the universe came to earth and the only thing he had to inherit was a manger. And if a manger is good enough for the king of the universe, then ask yourself, what's good enough for you? What do I really need to hold on to? And what are some things that I can let go of? To be truly poor in spirit, we must stay hungry. And as a little nod to my friends south of the border, stay thirsty, my friends. Practicals, try to add something else to your fast these last few days before Advent so you can really enter in and make some space for God. You can't be hospitable and let Jesus into your inn if you don't make a room for him. So try to make that room for him. Comment down below if you have any Advent fast you're doing or any tradition or thing you like to do with your family. Maybe it's a service or act of charity. If you like the content, hit that like button. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you're new here, uh, welcome. Thanks for sticking to the end of this video. Make sure you hit the bell so you always are notified of when new videos come out. From us, to you, through Mary.